leaves that I will be using. There are different colors, as you can see, which are used for different relaxing properties. And as I sprinkle it in, this little gently brush this leaf. So we need just the dust of a dragon's egg and I will use this feather to extract it. Our body is full of different meridians that travel through our body and there are very specific points on our body and I'm just going to tickle it here with a little bit of a brush all right my darling are you ready Hello my friend, today I have a very special treat for you. I have created these magical tarts. And each one has been crafted with love and care. And I have a series of potions that I can use to lace the tip and when the when it pierces you instead of it being like a poison dart it's actually a calming dart and you will feel an immense sense of calm and relaxation almost like a psychedelic calm and if you're up for it I would love to share my magical darts with you today. The first thing that we'll need to do is to make our potions, which will take just a little bit of time. So I'll set this aside for now. And we'll go ahead and and to make our potions. It's very important that when you're collecting the materials that you use glass jars in which to collect all the items that we'll need to make our magic potion. And I have a series of these little glass bottles that I use for this particular activity. Put these over here. Now, I will need a variety of materials, some of which are very strange, but all of which have certain properties and when combined together can give you the most luscious and wonderful relaxing feeling. So don't be alarmed at the ingredients as we collect them. It's really a synergistic effect of the combination that we use. And there will be a total of 14 different ingredients that we need today. So we will have Some of these bottles are very old, more than a hundred years old, and time itself has imbued them with the wonderful, relaxing quality of being a purple hue. Okay. 
first ingredient that we need is oil of moon rock. That's our first ingredient. Okay. And the next ingredient that we need is the sound of fall leaves. I know, there's some very strange ingredients for sure. So what we'll do is we'll just gently brush this leaf. sound is denser than air, so it will collect in the little jar, don't worry. And when you experience the magical darts, some of these sounds will You might recall them or be able to feel the sensation of their flavor, their essence. Okay. Oh, now we need the blood of a stone. yourself, how does one get blood out of a stone? And it is through the use of a very special magical tool, these little grippies here, and it helps create a bit of friction. So while I squeeze this stone, I will be able to have a drop of the blood of a stone. here my dragon egg and yes dragon eggs are this small it is a well-known fact that dragons are very small when they are born and then grow to very large in size all right so we need just the dust of a dragon's egg and I will use this feather one has been sitting on my shelf for some time, so there's quite a bit of dust. Okay. Good. The next item that we need is Maladon salt. This is indeed just salt like you would put on your food, but maladon salt has very large crystals. So when you taste it, because of the large crystal structure, it's more intense. If I add this to one of my potions, 
for finishing like at the very end of a meal when you're putting a little bit of salt on whatever you cooked or at the end on a baked good just lightly topping it that way the salt crystals don't dissolve they stay intact on our list is a peacock feather, the essence of a peacock feather. I will slowly twist and gently raise that there. And as you know, a peacock feather is an excellent device for relaxing you so we will see the essence there. There's many analogies in nature to what appears to be an eye in many of our senses. As humans are most powerful in a visual sense, so we will distill that down now into the sense of sound and the sense of calm. is the sensation of being tickled. And you may be asking yourself, how does one distill a tickle into a bottle? And let me just show you how. Just like this, very slowly, gently. Now you wouldn't want to pour this on anyone and they would burst out laughing hysterically. It's a very dangerous potion. Alright, now the next thing that we need is the skeleton of a fairy. One that died of natural causes, of course. So, I have here a series of fairy bones that I have collected over time. And I will gently take one of these bones and place it into a jar. Now, to intensify that particular item, I'm going to add this little feather here as well. Ah, uh, yes. Now, this is a very strange one, but indeed, it is perhaps one of the most important ingredients. And that is a poem, a spoken word. And as I speak, this poem will slowly make its way into this bottle. It's a short poem, so bear with me. It's by Mary Oliver, and if you like poems about nature, I highly recommend her work. This 
one is called Blackwater Pond. At Blackwater Pond, the tossed waters have settled after a night of rain. I dip my cup to hands. I drink. A long time it tastes like stone. Poetry is not everyone's cup of tea, but it is incredibly important in potion making because it is often a door into our subconscious, so poetry can help break down barriers of reality, and that can be very helpful, especially in this kind of calming exercise. Okay, next item is cashmere chili. Now this is a very red spice. It's so red it might scare you and that's okay. But it is not that spicy. In fact, it's much more mild than cayenne or other things like that. And it's a very delicate spice that will enliven any dish that you put it in. It's essentially like adding a little salsa dancer to any of your meals that will just tick tap on your tongue to the most delicate beat, the vibrations of which will bring out the succulent deliciousness of any meal, including magical darts. And yes, it's important to have spice, it's important to have flavor, it's important to give a little bit of heat to our potions. So even though this is a spice that you would find in your kitchen, it's absolutely crucial to potion making. I know that that might surprise some people, but it's true. Very gently. Now, if you're sensitive to spice, you will want to reduce the quantity but we won't leave it out altogether for there must be a little bit of spiciness in life. I believe that should be sufficient. Okay. Our next ingredient is... Ah, here we are. Okay. A ray of sunshine. And you may ask yourself, how is it that I captured the ray of the sun? Well, I captured it in this little tiny orb here. And as I sprinkle it in, this little tiny miniature replica sun is dripping rays of sunshine into this bottle. And just imagine being pierced by a ray of sunshine. You, my friend. Interesting. Our next ingredient is the tear of a cyclops eye. Yes, you heard it here first, folks. The tear of a cyclops eye. Now, don't try to get this at your local grocer. It just isn't available. You will have to visit your local magic shop for this kind of action. And as you can see here, I have borrowed, borrowed to be noted, Cyclops eye, don't get your panties in a wad. I will be returning it. All right, and I'm just going to tickle it here with a little bit of a brush as I collect a tear or two or three. 
on the Cyclops side. There we go. Just like so. Okay, maybe I got ten. But it's a very important ingredient, alright? Okay. We have two ingredients left yet to capture. So, let's see here. The next thing we need is the memory of the beginning of time. I know it's a rare item, I understand, but I have dug one up. And as you can see here, in the pillars of the universe, the beginning of the singularity, the expansion of all. Stars, universe, matter, consciousness. The record is here. And I hope you can get a good look at that. And as I take the paper like that, I will just be funneling. One last ingredient to collect, and that is fire. So, let me grab a match here. Okay. And here we go. Oh. Almost ready to begin. Now, these ingredients that we have collected are extremely potent. I mean, some of them would cause you to be so calm, you would never come back to a state of anything else. And as tempting as that may sound, we do need some anxieties and stresses in our life to function, like, you know, to remind us to eat and things. So, we are going to use a carrier product, like a carrier oil, in these to help us distribute them on the ends of our magic darts without such an intensity as to leave you in a coma, which I don't want to do. I do want to relax you. I don't want to leave you in a coma. Alright, do be noted. Now, we do need to make that carrier product, and it is of the utmost scientific process that I have used, and we will begin by using glass here. This is the steam collected from a volcano. These are feelings of excitement, joy, happiness, charisma, gumption. They are the essence of what makes human beings human. Yes. And we'll just put a few in. You'll begin to hear them working right away. time for them to dissolve. These are powerful emotions. Now 
I will let them dissolve completely before capping them. And we will use this in all of our potion making. It's an incredibly important ingredient. It can be very volatile, which is why I always make it immediately when I'm using it. You don't want to leave this sitting on your shelf. Okay. Now you might be wondering how I will convey these darts to you. And these are actually the dart shooters that I will be using. There are different colors, as you can see, which are used for different relaxing properties. Green is a sense of soothing. It's a salve. The pink is a sense of calm, bright, warm Sunday afternoon. The blue is a sense of sleep of a night sky. The yellow is a sense of warmth. It makes you feel warm and cozy, like you're wrapped in a warm blanket. And clear is pure awareness of yourself, and of your spirit, and of your sense of belonging and place. So as you can see, each one of these will add a layered effect to the magical darts that we'll be using today. They look just like this, and are perfect for conveying these magical darts. Alright. Now, I think it is well past time that we begin to make our first potion. So, with that being said, let us begin. first vessel here, and I use different vessels for different reasons. Oh, I almost forgot. I think before we do a magical dart, we should do a clearing and brushing of your aura, if that's okay with you. I think that would be beneficial, that way we can remove any spiritual detritus or anything like that that's lingering, so you'll have the strongest effect. So for clearing the aura, I will use some sage layered with dried flowers and rainbow thread. Grab my matches here. My cloak, just like so. Next, I would like to brush your face and your body where I'll be treating you with this, with this brush here. And just like so, just helping you into a state of calm so that you'll be receptive. mention before we get started on our magical dart treatment is that our body is 
full of different meridians that travel through our body and there are very specific points on our body acupressure points or points that they may target in acupuncture that when pierced can help realign our meridians almost like straightening out the energy highways of our body and similarly in this magical treatment that you'll be receiving I'll be targeting different areas of your body, different points that I know are very relaxing so between the potions that we've created the special dart straws the targeting these effects should be compounded triple fold to help you feel the most relaxed you have ever felt in your life now I must admit to you that many of the people who have received this treatment are never the same. It's life changing in that respect and the effects of the magical potions, as one might surmise from the ingredients, are intense, otherworldly. They are going to break you out of your understanding of reality. This can be a little bit painful for some people. For most people, it's an incredible relief. So I want you to be prepared to feel things, to see things that you never imagined, never felt possible. Okay, I've hyped it up enough, let's get into it. So for our first potion here, I am going to use a little bit of the Maladon salt. a little bit of the fire that we created like so a little tickle in a bottle there we go and a little bit of the oil of moon rock okay. now I will add a bit of my carrier now, many of our guests prefer to be blindfolded during the initial process when I will shoot the magical dart at you. If you don't know when to expect it, it can be a little bit easier. And I want you to know that this is not painful. In fact, is the opposite of painful. It is incredibly relaxing. So, if you would like to be blindfolded, I'd be happy to do that. Okay. I will go ahead and blindfold you. I use a silk blindfold, which you can still kind of see. So, you can choose to close your eyes or just see a little bit out of the blindfold, that's just fine. Alright. Are you ready, my darling? Here it comes. Was your first magical dart? It was magical, wasn't it? Are you ready for the next one? Yeah? Okay. Let's see here. Oh, I have to make the potion first. <laughs> Got a little ahead of myself there. Go. of a fairy. There we go. We have a little bit of 
with Maladon salt. We have the sound of fall leaves, and we have the tear of a cyclops. And what? suited. And we'll add a little bit of our carrier potion. We have lace the dart just like so. I'll use the soothing green applicator for this one. Did you want the blindfold on again this time, or do you need it anymore? You don't need it anymore. Okay. Well, in that case, off to relaxation, my friend. Everyone more magical than the last, isn't it? Alright, well, since we have so many more, I think we should do another another one. I have my vessel here, and I think in this one we will use a bit of peacock feather. A little bit of tickle in a bottle. A little bit of a cyclops tear. And let's see here. The blood of a stone. There we go. And a little bit. These blue flame feathers. There we go. Are you ready, my dear? You look more and more relaxed every time you come out of that state after you've had the magical dart. Are you sure you can handle more?
Alrighty, so this one we'll do Memory of the Beginning of Time. Okay, and a ray of sunshine. There we go. And a little bit of cashmere tree. Don't say I didn't warn you, this one is going to be spiky. Okay, and we will do Little bit of our carrier potion here. For this one, I will use the shade of night applicator. It should help you fall asleep. And my dark. Alright, my darling, are you ready? Well, they are called magical darts for a reason. Are you up for another one? Of course you are. <laughs> Who wouldn't be, right? Okay. Have a little dish for this one. And let's go ahead and put in a poem. Put in a ray of sunshine, a little bit of salt for flavor, and a little bit of the dust of a dragon egg. There we go. Our carrier oil. What shall we use here? We'll use this black feathered one and I will use the yellow applicator. So I gently coat the tip here in my potion for you. It should feel so amazing when it hits that meridian, that calming spot on your body. It takes you to another realm and relaxation. I did indeed make these darts myself. Everything's handmade here. Yeah. Are you ready? And you could look more relaxed if you tried. With that being said, I still have a few more magical darts.
that I would like you to experience if you're up for it. Of course, you can. All right. Well, let's get our vessel out. Is this one here? We'll go ahead and get a little bit of cashmere chili going. We'll get. A little bit of our salt. A little bit of our fire. The memory of the beginning of time. And the oops, excuse me. The dust of a dragon. generously coat the tip so as to obtain the maximum relaxation properties and potential possible. I will use the soothing applicator to mediate the fiery pepper. Magical dart. Okay. Go ahead and use a wooden bowl this time. Some potions are better to be made in glass, some are better to have a wooden vessel, or really just depends. Yeah. Alrighty. Skeleton of a fairy. Died of natural causes. And the oil of moon rock. of the sound of fall leaves tickle in a bottle and let's see here peacock feather and cyclops tears okay. and our carrier potion here
Welcome back. Yes, it's true. You usually can even feel the dark before it even hits you, and the sense of calm is so pervasive that you just succumb to it immediately. Yeah, that's how powerful they are. I do have one more potion that I would like to share with you. One that I think will take you to the realm of total sleep relaxation, and after that I will let you be. Let you enjoy the wonderful sensations that I've shared with you today. When you can come back anytime. Yeah, I love making these potions and helping you relax. Okay, one more. One more. <laughs> can you handle it? Okay. <laughs> this one. And I will use the blood of a stone, the tear of a cyclops, the memory of the beginning of time, the dust of a dragon's egg, the oil of moon rock, the skeleton of a fairy died of natural causes. The sound of fall leaves. Maladon salt. Cashmere chili. Ray of sunshine. A dose of fire. in a bottle, and a little bit of peacock feather. Yes, you're right. This one has all of the ingredients in it, and is supremely powerful, so you will need to lay down and take a rest after this. It's going to be a lot to absorb, but it's going to feel wonderful. And... I'll be using is the calm, pure, true, authentic self and consciousness, and the dark. I'll be using this. 